We recently at the University of California conducted a study with um, a new technology that's available. It's, it's using fractal tones. Fractal tones sound a little bit like wind chimes and it's a, it's a technology that's available in, in the Widex hearing aids and, the, it, that, and is called the Zen program. And Zen is, is a listening option. It's, a, it's a, a program that's contained within the hearing aids that the hearing healthcare professional can activate or not activate depending on how the work with the patient is going. So we wanted to see whether or not this Zen program would, number one, be relaxing for patients, and number two, would it have any effect on the annoyance of their tinnitus? And so we took a number of subjects, we actually found 14 subjects who were severely impacted by their tinnitus. These were subjects who were patients over at our university that we had tried a lot of different techniques with in the past and none of them worked to the point where the patient was feeling okay about their tinnitus. So we took some pretty difficult subjects into this particular study and we had them listen to a variety of the Zen tones or these fractal tones. We had them also listen to uh, a broadband noise. We had them also listening, listen to amplification alone and to amplification plus the different Zen tones plus the broadband noise. So there were a number of different conditions that we asked patients to go through. And then we also had the patients, once they found particular um, settings that they were happy with after we adjusted pitch and tempo and things like that, we actually had them wear the hearing aids with the Zen programs in them for a six month period and then assessed how this impacted their reaction to the tinnitus once they have, have gone through this therapeutic program. And so <clears throat> what we found was that relaxation was something that was achieved by the patient, by the patients. In fact, over 80% of the subjects involved in the study stated that they found it easier to relax when they were listening to the fractal tones. We also found that there were very specific preferences that were individually based for certain kinds of um, tempo or rhythm, certain pitches that came out of the different uh, fractal or zen tones. And we found those to be pretty interesting because generally speaking, the results that we found followed along with some of the very well-established principles about music. Things like sl slow tempo tends to be more relaxing than a fast tempo. Lower pitches tend to be more calming than higher pitches. Major chord, major musical chords are more relaxing and pleasant to listen to than minor musical chords. And it was very interesting that almost all of the subjects followed along those guidelines, although there were absolute individual variations, which told us that it is very important to allow the patient and the hearing health care professional to be able to make some variance or some adjustments in the tones or in these Zen um, programs to fit the patient's individual needs. So we found that it was relaxing for the vast, for 80 percent of the patients. We also found that the majority of the patients showed that they preferred the, the Zen tones to a broadband noise. Now what was interesting about this was the broadband noise actually suppressed the tinnitus more than the Zen tones. But of these 14 subjects, only two of them decided that they would like to listen to the broadband noise out in the real world for a long-term basis. Now, that was an interesting finding because finding that it wasn't simply suppression of the tinnitus that was important. It was other characteristics as well. So the long-term comfort of the patient see, and the relaxation induced by the fractal tones seemed to be something that was very important to patients in terms of their daily listening. The other thing we found that had been found by other researchers previously is that amplification alone really helps tinnitus patients because it, it stimulates the parts of the brain that were not getting stimulated because of the hearing loss. So amplification was very important, but then the addition of the Zen tones and the option of also mixing in a background noise if necessary was what really 
created some positive success for the patients. Not every patient succeeded with this. Not every subject in this study succeeded. Um, the majority did, some didn't. But it was for those who did that the success was so significant that the change in their reaction to their tinnitus was highly significant. So it's one of those things that if you can provide, uh, that we always have to provide counseling to a patient, we should always provide amplification to a patient if they have any degree of hearing loss, which most people who have tinnitus do. Once those things are provided, giving them additional options, particularly options that utilize musical stimuli, such as the Zen tones, that are unpredictable so you don't sit and actively focus on them, because that's not how you want to try to learn to cope with the tinnitus. You, you have to kind of do that in a more passive manner. But if we can provide something that stimulates that part of the brain, a certain part of the brain that we call the limbic system, by the way, if we could stimulate that part of the brain with a pleasant stimulus, such as music, such as these Zen tones, then we're going to go a long ways into both addressing the acoustic needs as well as the emotional needs by helping the patient recognize that there's a strong relationship between stress, relaxation, and ability to cope with tinnitus. That's what we need to, that's what we really need to break. We need to break that cycle where you have tinnitus and you become more stressed and then you become more stressed and so your tinnitus appears louder. That's what we want to break and by in, what we found in this study is the use of these Zentones actually gave us that ability to break into that cycle. One of the things that we looked for in, the, in our study of the Zen programs was to determine are there specific patients or subjects for whom this program would be ideal for, this option would be ideal for. And do, at least in the course of the study, we were not able to identify very specific features that would be, um, that, that would tell us these, these patients need the Zen, these patients don't need the Zen. I think from my clinical practice, what I would conclude is this. If the patient finds stress, exacerbates, or triggers their tinnitus, and that, by the way, is most patients, if they find that they're not relaxing because of their tinnitus, then the Zen becomes a useful option. For a lot of the patients that have tried background signals in the past, particularly background signals that haven't been filtered properly, and that they still have not been satisfied with how they're dealing with their tinnitus, I think Zen becomes a very viable option for them. But I don't think that there's a specific kind of person that you would automatically look at and say, you know, based on this person's hearing loss, they're a good candidate for Zen or they're not. It's not really the hearing loss, it's really the reaction to the tinnitus. If the person is upset because of their tinnitus, 